The USA Radio Network presents the greatest radio programs of all time. Suspense. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Dragnet. This is Classic Radio Theater. Gangbusters! I was a communist for the FBI. Lights out, everybody. Now here's your host, Wyatt Cox. Well, you're used to hearing the 15-minute versions of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, but we found a few longer versions, and here's one today from July 21st, 1957, Bob Bailey starring as yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in the Yours Truly Matter. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. I have your call to Hartford, Connecticut, Mr. Dollar. One moment, please. Thanks, operator. Hello? Pat McCracken. Hi, Pat. Johnny Dollar. Oh, good. Still out on the West Coast, Johnny? Practically. Did you clear up that Kincaid matter? Mailed you the final report two days ago. Oh, good. Now, sit tight, because I think I'll have another case for you out there. Yeah? Well, I've got one all lined up for myself. I just want to get your okay for an expense account. Well, that depends. Who holds the policy? Holds several policies with the companies that you serve. Who is he? Or is it a she? Oh, it's a he, all right. The most important client I know. Ah, who, Johnny? certainly the one deserving the most attention. Well, who is it? Me, Pat. What? Me. Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Attention, Mr. Pat McCracken. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of and participation in the yours truly matter. (laughs) Item one, $34. Transportation and all the incidentals I could think of. Los Angeles to Las Vegas, Nevada. I needed a couple of days of relaxation after that Kincaid affair. Item two, $31.40 for my room at the Flamingo Hotel, plus two fancy meals and a couple of drinks to go with them. Item three, 85 cents phone call to my old pal Buster Favor down at Lake Mojave Resort on the Colorado River. Sure glad to hear your voice again, Johnny. Coming down here for some fishing? Buster, how did you guess? Big lunk of bass are practically jumping into the boat. How big? Three to six pounds. Ah, I did that well on the Flamingo boat yesterday on Lake Mead. Then I'll arrange for some bigger ones that stand by and wait for you. Want me to drive over and pick you up? No, no, I like to be independent, so I'll rent a car here. Well, in that case, wait for me. Huh? I've got to have three or four days' work done on my car at a garage there in Vegas. So? So I'll drive on up, leave my car, and you and I can come back here together in yours. And when you've had your fill of fishing... Okay, what? Buster, it's a deal. See you when you get here. <laughs> Item four, $100 deposit on a rental car, a shiny new air-conditioned Cadillac. And remember, Pat, one of your companies holds the insurance on it. Item 5, 2170 for drinks and a big dinner with Buster when he arrived. It was quite late when we hit Route 95 for the drive down to Lake Mojave Resort across the desert. It was still hot after the day's high temperature of 118. You driving so fast to keep up the breeze, Johnny? You ought to take it a little easier. They patrol these roads pretty good, you know. Are you kidding? I haven't seen a car in nearly ten miles. Yeah, and you mightn't see one of those law boys until he's right up on top of you. Oh, Buster, you mean they hide on the side road? No, not hide. They patrol some of them. Hey, where do all those side roads go, Buster? Some of them are a little more than wagon trails. Mostly to old mines, Johnny. Some of them 10, 15, 20 miles away up in the hills. Some of them be in work. Some of them just... Now, look. Yeah. Over to your right. You see those lights? Look like they're on the side of the mountain. Oh, yeah. That's Haley's Tungsten Mine up there. Real big operation. A few miles ahead, one of my old friends has mine. He works it for, uh... Uh Uh-oh. What's the matter? Look in the 
rear view mirror. I see some other lights. Oh, hey, if you think we're stepping along, that guy behind us is certainly... Uh-oh. Yeah, that flashing red light above the corner of his windshield means a highway patrol oh, car. Right. Also means you better stop. Well, it isn't as though I've been driving all over the road. It's as though you haven't been keeping a sharp enough eye on the speedometer. Okay, start thinking up excuses, Johnny, and they'd better be good. Oh, no, I'll take it like a man. Shall we get out and greet the minion of the law? No, oh, no, don't. You might think you're trying to pull something. And those laddies carry guns. Just sit here calmly, eyes front, and try to look innocent. Yeah. All right, boys. Huh? Oh, there's nothing in the back seat, officer. I... What? That's right, mister. Nothing but me. And this. Hey, now, wait a minute. You're not... Hey, Johnny. Yeah. I take it that thing's loaded. That's right. Now get going. You were flashing that red light. Flashlight. Food are pretty good tonight. You were making like the highway patrol, and man, is that against the law. Uh, you think that's bad? Just wait till you see what I've got for you. I'll start her up. Hey, look, miss. Don't argue with a gun, Buster. Yeah. Buster, remember that. And remember it's aimed right at the back of your head. I'll get going, you. Sure. Here we go. Oops. Hey. Watch it, will you? What's the idea of backing up that way? I'm sorry. It's a rental car. I guess I'm not used to it. Yeah, uh, well, watch it. Sure, yes, sir. You know. Take it real slow, buddy, and no funnies or I'll pull this trigger first and figure it out afterwards. Yes, sir. You're the boss. You bet I am. Well, what happens now? Just keep going straight ahead. When I want you to turn off, I'll tell you. Where do you think you're taking us, mister? Where you guys will be a long, long time getting back to civilization. And by then, I'll be loaded and out of the state. Just a plain stick-up, huh? Yeah, that's right. Modern style. Well, look now, just because we're driving a big car If you mean... got dough enough to gamble big money in Vegas and rent a big car, you got enough for me. You and a few others I'll take over before the night's over. Unless you get tagged first. This car will be plenty easy to identify. You'll find this car back where I stopped you. If you ever get there. Oh, brother, I wish I had a good look at that one of yours. <laughs> Why do you suppose I pulled up behind you and didn't give you a chance to look? Now, let up on that gas. Getting a little nervous? Well, I just want to be sure that if I have to put a hole in the back of your heads, I can get to the wheel before this crate flips over. Pretty smart, aren't you? Yeah. That's why I stay alive and in the chips. Easy now. You see that little side road? Yeah, what about it? Turn off on it. Why not? Hey, Johnny. Yeah. It's the road to old McKinney's mine. Who's oh, McKinney? He's the one. Look, if you guys want to talk, talk up. I'll quiet you down permanently. Talking about this lousy road is all. Yeah, well, that's why I picked it, buddy. And, and take it easy. Hit these bumps too fast and this gun's liable to go off. And you wouldn't like that now, would you? We continued up the rough, curving road on the side of the mountain. Ten, fifteen miles, I guess. And I could see nothing but the road itself and the shadow of the mountain ahead of us. Turn up that air conditioning, buddy. It's a hot night. Yeah, sure. Listen, we go much further on this road, we'll scrape off the drip pan. You know this road? It keeps getting worse and worse is all. This car's built pretty low, you know. Hey, take it easy, I said. How can I? Do you hear that? We don't stop pretty soon. We'll all get stranded out here. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you got something there. Okay, buddy, that, that wide spot. You turn us around and stop. And take it easy. Okay, okay. Now what? Just leave the engine running and both of you get out the right-hand door. Yeah, sure. Now look... Shut up. From now on, I'm not going to waste any time. Come on, get out. You're not going to leave us out here, I hope. <laughs> That's right. I figure the temperature's still around 100, so you're going to have to take it easy. It'll be long after daylight before you get back down the highway. If we make it at all. Oh, you will. If you go real slow. And if I don't have to use this on you. <laughs> now, turn around, both of you. Hands up in the air. Now, look, mister, with no water out here in this heat, it'll be murder. It'll be murder if you try anything cute. <clears throat> what? 
Well, hey. Nearly a hundred bucks. You don't know this desert heat. Shut up. Now you. Okay. Here, here, lower that left hand just a little. And be careful. Say, I like that watch. And that ring. Yeah. Yeah. Say, you must have done all right at the gambling tables. Well, easy come, easy go. That's right. Well, well, well. <laughs> this card fall out of your wallet? Yeah. Johnny Dollar Insurance Investigator. <laughs> oh, boy, that's a laugh. A private dick. Just as big a sucker as anybody else. Yeah, I'm laughing. All right, now, boys. Walk. Ten steps, straight forward. Together. Come on, Buster. No, sir. Now, look, you, if you think that you're going to... Wait a minute, Buster, don't. Oh, no, you don't. Oh. Why, you dirty rat. Yeah. And one phony move out of you and you're going to get the same. Only right in the back, you hear me? Now you walk. Walk. Keep going. Walk. Walk! Buster. Buster. Why, that dirty murdering... July 21st, 1957. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar on Classic Radio Theater. Nothing is more important than protecting your family and property. That's why you should make a free call right now to Vivint, the number one smart home services provider in the U.S. Vivint will make your home safer and more secure with a state-of-the-art system that's so simple to use. Vivint smart home specialists provide award-winning monitoring of your system 24-7, 365 to respond to any emergency, even when you can't. And with the 4.5-star rated Vivint smart home mobile app, control your entire house from anywhere. Locks, cameras, security system, all at your fingertips on on your mobile device. Call Vivint now and get a free quote, professional installation, and full smart home service for as little as $2 per day. Equipment purchase or service agreement required. Conditions apply. Call now. A smart home is a safer home. So protect your family and your property, home or business, with a Vivint smart home system. Call 800-619-7902. That's 800-619-7902. Call now, 800-619-7902. I used to wonder when I saw people going into nice hotels, really nice hotels, taking a pillow with them. That was before I got a MyPillow because I know it doesn't matter where I'm going. Whether I'm going to a one-star, three-star, five-star hotel, MyPillow goes with me, whether it's just overnight or whether it's on vacation. And here's the great deal about MyPillow right now. The lowest price ever offered on radio or TV Two MyPillow Premium Pillows for $69.98. That's only $34.99 per pillow. The lowest price ever offered on radio or TV. And it's still the same pillow. Great pillow. 60-day money-back guarantee. 10-year warranty. And call them. 1-800-951-8175. Or go to MyPillow.com. Use promo code USA. Click on the two-pack special and get the best deal you've ever gotten on a good night's sleep. When you get a my pillow. Are you drowning in debt? Are you struggling to make minimum payments? Did you know that on average, a household with at least one credit card struggles with over $15,000 in credit card debt? If this sounds like you, know that it's not your fault. Credit card debt happens to good people. Credit card companies lure you in with low introductory rates and low minimum payments. Before you know it, you're in over your head. National Debt Relief has helped thousands of good people just like you become debt-free with our Debt Reset Program that will dramatically reduce your debt down to a fraction of what you owe. Our Debt Reset Program is customized to get you debt-free in as little as 24 to 48 months with one low monthly payment. If you owe over $10,000 in credit card debt or even personal loans, call 800 274 9490. There are no upfront fees or out of pocket expenses. You don't pay a dime until we succeed. Call now to see how the debt reset program can work for you. 800 274 9490. That's 800 274 9490. 800 274 9490. Thanks for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater on your favorite station, July 21st, 1957. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the Yours Truly Matter. 
And now, act two of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, and the Yours Truly Matter. He'd overtaken Buster Favor and me on Highway 95, out in the middle of the Mojave Desert. That gun pointed me to drive my rented air-conditioned car of a rough, winding side road, miles and miles up into the mountains, and finally stopped. There, he'd ordered us out into the stifling desert heat. He'd taken out watches and money, and there, in spite of my warning, Buster had turned on him. Then, with a the gun aimed at my back, he'd ordered me to walk away from the fallen man. Then he took off in our car. Buster! Buster! Me, the dirty murdering... Just take it easy, Johnny. Oh, what? Buster, you're okay. Yeah, yeah, but I sure had myself worried there for a minute. Pretty lousy shot, wasn't it? Oh, brother, you were crazy to make a dive at him. Only legitimate way I could think of to get down on the ground. What are you talking about? You see these? I can't see a thing, but it sounds like a couple of stones. Yeah, a real sharp one of the kind that cut a tire of ribbons out here. Chunks of lava. Oh, what? Yeah, I shoved them under the right front wheel. Buster, those tires are probably self-sealing. Sure, so just to make certain, I went to work with this old knife of mine that he didn't seem to want. When he hits a few of those washouts, we went over. Oh, good boy. But on that rough road and with power steering... Don't you worry. You'll have to stop and change a tire before he gets very far. Rubber sealant was already leaking out fast. In the meantime, we better get on on after him. Come on. Are you forgetting he still has that gun? Johnny, I'll show you tricks for getting a man in the desert at night that you never heard of. And don't forget, he'll be the one standing in the light from his car. If he's had to stop. He'll be stopped. If you stumble onto any rocks about the size of a baseball, pick him up. Oh, yeah, maybe I'll show you why I ought to be pitching for the New York Yankees. And while I'm occupying them from one side in the darkness, why... Right? Okay, Buster, let's go. Easy, easy. This heat will get you faster than you think. Then let's hope it gets him when he stops to change the tire. That's what I'm banking on. If he does. Don't you worry, Johnny. He will. Slowly, carefully, we trudged on down the side of the mountain, conserving our strength. I was glad that Buster knew the ways of the desert. A couple of times we left the winding trail to make shortcuts around big mounds and rocks, around old mine workings. And then we saw them. Car lights, Johnny. You see? Yeah, but they're moving down there, winding back and forth. He hasn't had to stop yet. No, no, I guess it... Hey, wait a minute. Those lights are coming up the trail. Yeah, why would we be coming back here? I don't know. Come on. Throw that little hill on the side. When he comes around it, we'll let him have a handful of rock through the windshield. Yeah, right. Pick up stones, anything you can get your hands on. Right. Hey, look, there's a good spot on that mound, huh? He won't see us, but we'll see him when he pulls around it. We'll be practically on top of him. Here. Here we are. Okay, okay, good. And don't forget, our eyes are used to the darkness. His won't be. We'll just... Just aim for his windshield, Johnny, with all we got. But don't forget, he still has that gun. Once we stop him, we'll have the advantage. With a cracked-up windshield, he won't be able to drive. And as long as it stays nice and dark, it... You listen. Yeah. Yeah, I am listening. That's... No Cadillac. That sure isn't. You... You think maybe he's nailed somebody else down on the highway and is bringing him up here? He hasn't had time to get halfway down there yet. Well, then who is it? Buster, I'm going to jump down and hail him. But if it is him... I have to take that chance. Johnny, Johnny, wait! That's deep. Hey, no stop! Stop! Hey, you, stop, will you please? Huh? Now, what the hell in tarnation are you doing out here? What's the matter? You get lost or something? Hey, listen, listen, mister. Did you pass a big sedan on the way up this road? No, wait a minute, young fella. Just who are hey, you? Matt. Hey, Matt. Matt McKinney. Huh? Who's that? That's Buster, can't you see? Buster Faber? That's right. Well, <laughs> hey, you gone crazy or something? Wandering around out here this time of night? Look, never mind that. I asked you about a car. Did you pass him? Pass him? I helped him out. Just below that uh, last hill. What do you mean? Well, he had a flat tire, so I helped him put on his spare. You what? City dude having a lot of trouble with the heat, so I give him a hand. Oh, no. And him, he give me a ten spot for my trouble. Doggone it, Mac. That guy stole our car and money from us and left us up on the mountain. Mm. No kidding. Who's kidding? Well, hmm. well, then, maybe I done right at that. 
What do you mean? Yeah, I've been worrying about it ever since I left him down there. What are you talking about, Mac? Well, me, I got an instinct. Yeah? The same kind of instinct about everything that I got about oh, finding Mac. a gold mine. Uh, uh, Buster, don't you tell the government. But I have took over 40,000 words of ore out of my right, mind Mac. up there since the turn of the year. Yeah, Look, well, Mister. go on with whatever it is you were getting at. Yeah, come on. Yeah, well, instinct. Now... You take my gate down at the end of the road. Oh, man. That wasn't closed when you come up here, was it? No, come to think of it, I wondered about that. But now, Mac... Usually, when I go into Vegas, like tonight, I close it. But you know something? Tonight, I clean forgot. All right, Mac, get to the point, will you please? Well, the point being that I did lock up the gate when I come off the highway just now. Oh. Eh. And I clean forgot to tell that fella I locked it after I fixed his turn. Wait a minute, Mac. Wait a minute. You mean he can't get back on the highway? He sure can't. And he can't break down that gate? <laughs> Not without wrecking his car. All right, then. That's what I was worrying about on the way up the hill. All right, now listen. Should... should... I go back on down and let him out or not. Would you listen, Mac, But please? then I remembered that bulge in his coat pocket like a gun. It was a gun, all right. Yes, sir. And my instinct Mac, told please. me... I don't care told what your instinct... Told me I'd better get back to the mine and telephone the county police on account of maybe he'd been prowling around so, my oh, mine. Look, look Mac. You've got a phone at the mine? Son, I got everything up there. Electric... How far is it? On this road, ooh, about three miles. All right, then, listen. But listen. walking, walking across that ridge, ooh, not more than a half mile. Good. Can you make it on foot? <laughs> I ain't been wandering around these hills the past 41 years for nothing. Then, brother, go to it. Huh? Buster and I will take the jeep. Well, now, You go time. up to the mine and call the police. Tell them to set up roadblocks, whatever they want to do. And stop a 1956 Chevy. It's gray and white, licensed CGJ158. You got that? Sure. CGJ158, a gray and white. No, Look, Mac, no, I'll wait. pay you for the use of this Jeep. Anything you like. Fifty bucks, a hundred. Oh, yeah? He's not kidding, Mac. Huh? You sure? You know him, Buster? His word's as good as mine, better. And, and he's kind of a lawman. Ooh, well. Uh, now, why didn't you so tell get me. Get on that... up there to that mine. Yeah, Matt, please. You can't Will tell you... the police what happened to us. Give them that description 1956 Chevy CGJ 158. That's the car the crook is using. Got it. Got and it. And you then go to it. Right, Buster. Come on, One Buster. Way, yeah. Right? <laughs> and you better let me drive. Okay, okay, bro. Okay. Hold on to your seat, and I'll show you how one of these things can really take these roads. What do you mean? You only hit the road every 20 feet so far. Hold on, Johnny. You ain't seen nothing. Buster wasn't kidding. And Max old sheep would have put a mountain goat to shame. To this day, it's a wonder to me how he ever held the thing together. To say nothing of how we managed to stay aboard. You think 90 miles an hour on the open road is a thrill? You should try 20 per on that old wagon trail. July 21st, 1957. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar on Classic Radio Theater. The conclusion comes up in just four minutes here on your favorite radio station. You know, for a while I worked in a hotel and I really used to go, why do people bring their own pillows with them? Well, once I got a my pillow, I understood. Because doesn't matter how good the hotel is, doesn't matter whether it's a two-star, three-star, five-star hotel, it doesn't matter how nice the hotel is if you don't get a good night's sleep. And the key to getting a good night's sleep is a my pillow. Now, the best deal ever offered on my pillow. Right now, you go to MyPillow.com, enter our promo code USA, click the two-pack special, and folks, you're going to get two MyPillow premium pillows for $69.98. That's $34.99 per pillow, the lowest price ever offered on radio or TV. Now, it's the same MyPillow we've been talking about for months. It stays cool all night long. You don't wake up but to flip the pillow over in the middle of the night. It keeps its shape. You don't have to fluff it up in the middle of the night. 60-day money-back guarantee, 10-year warranty, and that's the deal. Try it for 60 days. You don't like it, send it back. 10-year warranty. 
tell me another pillow you've got that's got a 10-year warranty. No. Nah. And the great thing is it's always as clean and fresh as new. If you get in a mess or after, you know, a couple of weeks, throw it in the washing machine, toss it in the dryer, fluff it up, and you got a brand new My Pillow. The lowest price ever offered on My Pillow, two My Pillow Premium Pillows, 69.98, 34.99 a pillow. You see if you can find a price like that anywhere else. Go to mypillow.com, click on the two pack special, enter my promo code USA, or call 1 800 951 8175. The best deal ever. And by the way, that promo code USA works on anything on the MyPillow website, mypillow.com. Thanks for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater on your favorite station. Now the conclusion of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, July 21st, 1957, the yours truly matter. Hey, wait a minute. Wait, nothing. We gotta catch up on that guy. No, what I mean is, how'd you ever know the make and license of his car? There wasn't enough light when he stopped us to see a thing. Why do you suppose I put the car into reverse when we started? Huh? Doing that turned on the backup lights. Backup lights? Sure. Gave me a good look at his car in the rearview mirror. Johnny, you're all right. Oh! Hey, how much more of this is there? We ought to get to the gate any minute. The gate? Buster, we ought to be shot. What's the matter? Oh, Mac didn't give us the key to that gate. We'll be locked in as well as that man. Uh, you don't think he's just going to be sitting there, do you? Oh, yeah, you're right. He'll have to go on to his own car on foot. Which gives us more time, Johnny, and a big advantage. Now, look. No, you look. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Either he didn't see the gate or he tried to plow right through it. And look what it did to that nice car. Come on. Okay. Over this way, Buster. All right. Stay out of the Jeep's headlights. Circle around. He may still be in that car. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay, we'll take it easy. And pick up a rock or two. I'm way ahead of you, brother. I don't see any sign of him. No. He's probably hooping it down the highway to his own car. We're going to take no chances. Right. Kind of his look for Right, he's now. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, he's gone. Yeah. Oh, brother, what he's done to this car. Somebody's going to pay a pretty penny. The insurance company. So come on. We'd better light out after him. We'll use the Jeep. But, Buster, if this big car couldn't knock down we'll that Jeep... drive gate. off the road and cut through the fence if old Mac had a pair of pliers and a toolbox. Come on. There were pliers in the toolbox, all right. And a pair of wire cutters, too. But it took us longer than it should have to find a place where even the Jeep could navigate through the fence. Finally, though, we got out on the highway. All right, not too fast, Buster. If he's still on foot, I want to be sure we see him first. You know what I'd like to see? What's that? The lights from a couple of patrol cars coming this way. You think they'd have time to get there? Even if Mac phoned him right away? Yeah, that's true. With our little pal with a gun, we ought to come on his car pretty soon. Unless he's already got to it and taken off. I just don't think so, Johnny. He'd try to move too fast in his heat, he'd collapse. Must be somewhere along this highway. Hide, maybe. Under one of those storm bridges along there. No, no, I think he's too smart for that. With a racket like his, he has to keep moving. Maybe he's bummed a ride back to his car. He's on his merry way again. Well, we'll soon find out. The place he stopped is right ahead on the curb behind that hill just beyond that next bridge. All right, then take it easy, will you? Yeah. Maybe we ought to stop the other side of this bridge. Hey, long about here. Buster, yeah? there was something underneath that bridge. Looked like a car. Well, your eyes are deceiving you now. Let's stop right here. Let's keep going. What? Now what? Just keep driving until you get to my car. Get it? Why don't you put that thing down? Listen, how did you get in the back of this Jeep? While you two bird brains were prowling around the cab there at the gate playing detective. Uh, pretty smart, aren't you? That's right. Like I told you, that's how I keep alive. Which is more than I can say for you, boys. What's that mean? Pull up. There's my car. Pull up right beside it. Now, look, man. Don't argue with him, Buster. Okay, here's your car. All right, now. Give me those keys. Come on, come on. Yeah, and kill your headlights. Kill them. Okay. 
Now, look. Things got balled up tonight. I I got held up too long. Now, I heard you say something about getting word to the cops. So I got to get out of here. I got to get out of the state. I don't know how you guys got the jeep away from that crazy old man. I, I, I didn't plan on you getting down off that mountain before daylight, see? But it's too bad you did. Oh, you sure? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Because I didn't take a chance on you getting away now. I can't. Especially you, Mr. Private Eye. Well, thanks. That means you think I might find some way to get the police on you in a hurry. Yeah, that's right. Maybe I have. Ah, no chance. Before I leave here, you're going to be dead. From this... You're out of your mind. Yeah, Buster, I think he is. Oh, yeah? Oh, stop waving that gun. One shot, just one shot, and you'll be dead so fast. Oh, yeah, wise guy, how? You know, Buster, I was right. Huh? What, Johnny? There was a car parked under that bridge back there, a police car. You're crazy. Oh, well, yeah, Johnny, I see what you mean. What? What do you see? You don't think you're the only one who can hide in a back seat, do you? What are you talking about? Old Mac must have really got that phone call through in a hurry. What are you talking about? That officer there. Oh, that old bluff. The officer waiting there in the back seat of your you're car nuts. with his gun aimed straight at your head. Oh, yeah? Well, there! Oh, God! <laughs> Out of nerve, Johnny, and throwing that rock in his windshield when he turned was just enough. Hey, where'd you get that rock, anyhow? Well, for some silly reason, I'd been hanging on to that rock ever since we started down the side of the mountain. Silly reason, huh? Not by a long shot, no, sir. Oh, and what do you know? Here comes a patrol car. <laughs> the one you were supposed to see hiding under that bridge. Hey, you know something, Buster? I really did think I saw a car under there. Oh, no. No, no, really, honest. I think I saw it back there. Expense account total. Hold your head, Pat. Including incidentals and my fare back to Hartford. $528. And that includes 50 bucks to old man McKinney for the use of his Jeep and 8150 for the repairs to Buster's car by way of thanks for his help. The car rental agency will present you with its own damage claim on the CAD. Oh, and of course, the windshield on that Chevy will have to be replaced. You see, it was also insured with one of your companies. So, Pat, you can just charge off this case to recovery of that car. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a small round piece of metal, a coin. Face value, 50 cents. Insured value, $20,000. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Lawrence Dobkin, Barney Phillips, Chet Stratton, and Junius Matthews. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverley speaking. July 21st, 1957, yours truly, Johnny Dollar on Classic Radio Theater. Welcome to Tax Talk with Hollywood legend Bob Eubanks. You know, as part of Hollywood for a long time, I've seen my fair share of celebrities get in trouble with the IRS. Well, there's one name I trust, the Tax Defense Group. 
They're the most trusted name in tax. So if you owe more than $10,000 to the IRS, you really need to call my friends at the Tax Defense Group. Ignoring the IRS is not the solution. They can garnish your paycheck, levy your bank accounts, seize your home or business. But the Tax Defense Group could put a stop to all of that and tailor a program that would reduce your tax debt to pennies on the dollar. You gotta love that. So don't just take my word for it. Call them. Find out for yourself. They offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And they're open 24 hours a day because they know that tax debt doesn't sleep either. Call now for your free and confidential tax analysis from the most trusted name in tax. Call 800-832-1594. 800-832-1594. If you enjoy our classic radio theater broadcasts and want to start building a collection of your own, go to classicradio.stream. That's classicradio.stream. There you'll find links to great classic radio collections on CD, along with links to great reading on classic radio, plus classic radio theater on demand. Check out our webpage, available now at classicradio.stream. That's classicradio.stream. And enjoy. Hi, this is Kyle Horvath with the White Pine County Tourism and Recreation Board. If you want to get away from the big cities and get back to nature this summer, give us a call at 775-289-3720 or visit us online at elynevada.net. There's so much to do and see, I can't mention it in 30 seconds, but check out our website and you'll see what Nevada is really all about. elynevada.net or follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Give us a call at 775-289-3720 or visit us online at elynevada.net. Here's a great deal on my pillow when you go to mypillow.com click on the two pack special type in promo code usa you'll get two my pillow premium pillows for 69.98 now that's only 34.99 a pillow you will not get that price anywhere at retail it's the lowest price ever offered on radio or tv and like all my pillow products 10 year warranty 60 day money back guarantee go to mypillow.com click on the two pack special use my promo code usa Now you can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 800-215-5141. 800-215-5141. That's 800-215-5141. Now on Classic Radio Theater, an episode of Lum and Abner, July 21st, 1942. No? Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the matter of who's going to take care of the old fellow's foundling baby has been temporarily settled by a compromise. Abner's wife, Elizabeth, and Lum have agreed to take care of him on alternate days. This is one of the days Lum is to have him. And so, as we look in on the little community... We find the baby asleep in his crib in the feed room of the Jotting Down Store and Library. Lum and Abner are busy writing names for the baby on little slips of paper. Listen. Uh, Wesley. That's a good one. Write that down. Now, Wesley. W-E-S. Yeah, all right. Max. Orlando. O R. L-A-N-D-O. Yeah, got it, got it. Uh, Sebastian, huh? No double boy named Sebastian. For the land's sake. S E. How do you spell Sebastian? Better make that Sam. Oh, yes, yeah, Sam. S A M. Go on, go on. Uh, Lum. Oh, you, now, wait a minute. We already got Lum wrote down on one of these slips of paper. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot it right <laughs> uh, How many names we got there now? I don't know. I've been so busy writing, I ain't had time to count them. Well, I believe that's enough. It ought to be. My fingers are so tart I can't hardly hold a pencil. That's all I can think of anyway. Well, that's quite a pile of them there. Did I write Charlie Abner down on one of them slips? That's the first one you done. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, pick them all up. Wait a minute. There's some on the floor there. Pick them up, too. Oh, (laughs) the wind must have blowed them off from the table, I reckon. There ain't no wind blowing today. Oh. You're just careless, that's all. Hurry up and pick them up so we can get the baby's name settled once and for all. Yeah, I'll get them. I reckon that's all I'll manage. Now, wait a minute. Here's a couple more over here. Now, I'll get them. Oh, yeah. For goodness sakes, look at this floor, Abner. Look how dirty it is. 
dirty. Why, well, I swept it out just this morning, just like I do every morning. Yeah, but sweeping out ain't good enough no more. Ain't good enough? Not on the days the baby's around the store. Beginning today, I want you to scrub the floor in there. Scrub it? Yeah, as soon as we get through with this main business, I want you to get a bucket of water and scrub the floor. Well, now, just a minute now, Lom. You don't want the baby to get germs from crawling around on the floor, do you? Why, no, of course I don't. All right, then, do as I say. Well, now, Lom, you ought to do the scrubbing. I do all the other work around here, sweeping and washing the windows and all such as that. I'd love to do it, Edmund, love to the worst way. But as long as this is our day to have the baby at the store, I've got to take care of him. Well, you can do it while he's sleeping. Oh, he's liable to wake up. No, I, I don't want to take no chances with him. Well, now, if he wakes up, I can go back Edmund, there. we ain't going to discuss that no more. Mm -hmm. Besides, you know how it brings on my rheumatisms to run my hand down the bucket of cold water. Yeah. You can't do it. I've heard you say that, yeah. And we just consider the matter settled, closed, and ended, and exterminated. Now, let's get on with this name drawing thing. Well, all right, but I still don't see why I have to be the and one that does. Stop grumbling and get my hat off the wall over there. Your hat? Where about you going? I ain't going nowhere. We're just going to use the hat for the drawing. Oh. Uh. We'll put all the slips of paper with them names wrote on them in the hat. Then we'll take it into the feed room and let the baby reach in the hat, and whatever name he pulls out, that's it. That'll be his name from now on. Oh, I see how it works now. Yeah, that's a good idea, good idea. Well, do we blindfold him first? No, we won't need to do that. Well, now, we don't want him to cheat now, Long. Well, he can't read none of the names no way, so it don't matter whether he can see them or not. Oh, oh yeah, that's right, Amy. <laughs> well, here, I'll get your hat first. All I hope is that the baby don't pull out the name of Orlando. <laughs> kind of sorry I put that name in there. Don't seem to fit him, no way. No, that's awful. It's better than Charlie Abner, though. Huh? Or that name Pearl wanted to give him, Avery. Yeah, here's your hat, here. Okay, that's a new one, ain't it, Long? No, it's just my Sunday hat. Huh? I ain't wore it much. No, it looks brand new. Been hanging on the wall there in the parlor. Yeah. <laughs> so when I bought it to the county seat about a year ago. Huh? Oh, wh where'd you get it? At the Mina Emporium? Oh, yeah. I always buy most of my clothes to Mina Emporium. Especially when I want something fancy. Oh, yeah. It's a nice store. You got all the slips in the hat, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. Let's go back there and let little Charlie draw his name. <laughs> well, wait a minute. We can't do it right now. He's asleep. You don't want to wake him up to do it. Well, couldn't we just go back there and see if he ain't awake just a little bit long? No, no. It ain't good for babies to do that to him, Abner. Mm hmm I'll tell you what, why don't you run across the street and see if the mail's come? I think I seen the mail act just a little while ago. Well, I don't want to leave now, Lum. What if he wakes up while I'm gone? Then I'd miss out on a drawing. No, you won't. If he wakes up, I'll wait till you get back. Promise? Why, well, sure. Mm, all right, then. I'll be back as quick as I can. Yeah, hurry up. you more than likely to be awake time you get back. Yeah, I hope so. Let's see now. Where's some paper? Yeah, here we are. Rocking a baby in a treetop. And he just pencils down. Hi-ho, my friend. Uh, oh, it's you, Mousy. Yeah. Granny, you scared me for a minute there. I thought you was Abner. <laughs> no, sir. I just saw Abner running across the street. Yeah, I know. Uh, Mom, could I have a few minutes of your time? No, can't you see I'm awful busy right now, Mousy? Well, this might be the opportunity that you're looking for, Lon. No, I can't help it, Mousy. I'm too busy right now. <laughs> uh, what are you doing there, Lon? Oh, just something. Don't bother me, Mousy. <laughs> Gee, you sure work fast, don't you? What are you writing little Lum on all those slips of paper for? Mousy, stop looking over my shoulder. Well, what's that for, Lon? Oh, nothing. Why don't you go home and run your detective agency? Well, that's what I wanted to see you about, Mom. See, I'm retiring, and I want to sell the agency. Retiring? Yes, sir. Well, I just feel like I've given the best years of my life to that detective agency, and, well, I just want to get out of the old harness for a while. What do you mean, the uh, best years of your life? You just had the agency for a couple of weeks. Yes, sir, but, well, see, we detectives live awful fast, Mom. Do you want to buy the agency? No, no, I wouldn't be interested, Mousy. I'll throw in my assistant, Operator XW-104, 
alias the blindfolded wildcat, alias Cedric Weehaw. Now, I don't care if you throw in Dick Tracy and Superman. I still don't want it. Now, run along, Mousy. I'm busy. Oh, I see. You're putting those slips into that hat there, aren't you? Huh? You going to have a drawing or a raffle of some kind, Long? Yeah, something like that. Well, it won't work out right, though, Long, that way. The way you're fixing it, why, the only name that can be drawn out of there is let alone. Mousy, I know what I'm doing. Now, run on home or someplace. Uh-oh, there comes Abner back. Listen, Mousy, don't say nothing about this to Abner. It's sort of a joke I'm playing on him. How about joke? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what kind of a joke, Lon? Never mind. Just hush up now, because here he comes. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, there weren't no man, Lon. Has the baby woke up yet? No, he ain't, Abner, so you ain't missed nothing. Oh, well, good. <laughs> well, howdy, Mousy. Hello, Abner. Say, Long, you must have been mistook about seeing that mail hack for Dick Huddleston said they ain't been here yet today. He didn't. Yeah. Well, I must have saw something else in him. I don't get wing that long. Listen, the baby's awake, can't cry. I think he is, crying. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah I'll better see what's wrong with him. Well, wait a minute, don't you want the hat? Eh, hey, not yet. Wait till I get him stop crying. Oh, well, hurry up. <laughs> hey, Abner, would you like to get into the detective business? No, Mousy, not me. It's a... Great opportunity for a young fellow, Abner. Try to help him make a name for himself. Make a name for himself? Wait a minute, I, I believe you give me an idea, Mousy. Oh, gee. Well, then you buy my agency? Buy your agency? I ain't buying no agency. I'm just going to make a name for somebody. Here, grab some of that paper there and tear it up in little strips, Mousy. Hurry up now, and then help me write Charlie Abner on every one of them. Come on now, hurry up before Long gets back. Uh-huh. Are you playing a joke on Mom, too? Yeah, yeah, that's it, a joke, I think. Hurry up, hurry up. Charlie and her, Charlie and her. Hurry up, ride him down there fast. Charlie and her. Well, exactly how does this joke work, Abner? Now, don't talk so much, Mouse. So just put them slips in that hat right there. Put them on top for all the others there. Yes, sir. Oh, 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 wait a minute. The baby stopped crying. Mom will be coming back now. Yeah, that's it, Mouse. Just spread them around on the top that way. Good. Cover up all them others in there. Now, don't say nothing long about this. No, sir. Get mind out, mind out. Here he comes. He's bringing the baby out here. Quiet. I don't believe there was a thing wrong with the little rascal, Abner. He just wanted to see me. <laughs> Look at him smile. Well, hello there, little Charlie, or little feller. Hello there. <laughs> don't did you hear that? He said hello, Abner, just as plain. He never done he no did. Thing. I believe he likes that name, Abner. But wouldn't it be funny if that was a name he drawed out of there, Charlie Abner? <laughs> yeah, it would be funny. I ain't much worried about it, though. Huh? Little Lum's too smart to draw a name like that, ain't you? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> there, he even said so himself, yeah. Mom, you wouldn't want to bet nothing on that, would you? Well, I ain't a betting feller, Abner, but I might wager a little on this. What do we bet? Huh? Well, let's see, uh... I know, if he don't draw the name of Charlie Abner, I'll have to scrub the floor. All right, and if he don't draw a little lump, I'll scrub it. All right, don't get that to me. Come on, hold the baby over here near the hat so they can draw a name. Yeah, come on, little fella. Yeah, hold it. You're about to pick yourself out a fine new name. <laughs> no, 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 don't grab the hat. You'll spill all the names. Hold on to the hat, Abner. Yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it. Well, hold it up higher so me and you can't see what name he's picking. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. How's this? Ask it. All right, put your little hand in there. Yeah, sort of put his hand in there for him. That's it. That's right. Hey, has he got one yet? No, I don't think so. Wait a minute. He's got one there. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be it. I don't get what it's saying. Yeah, what just it's a minute, saying. let me read it. Well, I do know. Is it Charlie Abner? Get a bucket of water, Abner. Huh? Get a bucket of water and two scrub brushes. Two scrub brushes? Yeah, one for each one of us. Well, what name did he draw on? There it is. Huh? Mina Emporium, size seven and one quarter. Gosh, did every show find babies back then? July 21st, 1942, Lum and Abner on Classic Radio Theater. Drop by the webpage, classicradio.stream, where you can stream our Classic Radio Theater podcasts on demand and our podcasts available anywhere fine podcasts are served. Just search for USA Classic Radio Theater. I'm Wyatt Cox. Thanks for listening. Thank this station. Support the advertisers. Tell a friend the great radio shows are back. 
Classic Radio Theater on your favorite station and the USA Radio Network. 